In this lecture, we're going to talk about demand, and this is the beginning of Unit 2, which focuses on supply and demand, or how prices are set in markets. So today we're just going to take a look at things from the consumer's point of view, um, and try not to think ahead to, to prices yet, because we'll get there after we talk about supply. But today we're just going to think about demand, and just think about the consumption. So what is demand? Demand is a, the quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at different possible prices at a particular time. That able piece is very important because if, if a person would like to buy something but they don't have the money to do it, if they're not able, then they're not technically demanding a product at that given time. You have to have the money to do what you want to do. The law of demand states that as prices decrease, quantity demanded increases, and as prices increase, quantity demanded decreases. So um, Black Friday is a good example of the law of demand in action. We have cheap prices and we have a zillion more people that want to buy things on Black Friday because of those cheap prices. And when things get more expensive, less people want to buy things. So this is kind of common sense. The law of demand explains the shape of the demand curve. Demand curves always slope downwards from left to right, given the way that the supply and demand graphs are, um, are formatted. So we'll take a look at an example here. When you make a graph of supply and or demand, and today we're focusing on demand, um, it's always important to put price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, because that's just the way that economists do things, so always stick to that format. Um, you can see here that the data in the demand graph um, here is taken from the numbers over here in the table. And so the table is known as the demand schedule. And over here we have the demand curve. All right. The only way we can get this data is by asking people how much they are willing and able to purchase at different prices. So here we asked Rico how much apple juice he was willing and able to buy at different possible prices and you can see that as the price of apple juice increases the number of bottles that Rico will buy each week goes down according to the law of demand and when we graph that information on the curve over here on the graph we can see that um, we're gonna have a downward sloping curve because price and quantity are inversely related so, as the price drops, the quantity demanded changes. The number that would be purchased changes. It's just a movement up or down the curve um, according to that change in price that happens. All right, now, some things will occur in markets that cause the whole demand curve to actually shift, and we call these demand shifters. Um, these demand shifters will cause a change in demand. Now, to back up, when price changes, it causes a change in quantity demanded, or a movement along the curve that's already there. But when a demand shifter happens, it causes a change in demand, which is a change that alters the quantity demanded at every price. So the curve will actually shift to the left or to the right, and here's what that looks like. Okay, if this is our original demand curve for ice cream cones, and let's say the summer season rolls around so there's an increase in demand for ice cream cones and at every possible price a higher quantity of ice cream cones is demanded then that demand curve is going to shift to the right so a rightward shift is an increase in demand and a leftward shift is a decrease in demand so for example if um, many people found out they were allergic to dairy products then there could be a decrease in demand and so at every possible price a smaller quantity of ice cream cones would be demanded and that curve would shift to the left. So a shift to the right is an increase, a shift to the left is a decrease. And um, the only way a curve is going to shift is if a higher or lower quantity is demanded at every possible price. So here are the possible demand shifters and I'll talk about each one um, independently. And if you're thinking about a scenario and you can't, um, you can't categorize the event or the change that's occurring into one of these shifters, then it probably isn't supposed to cause the curve to shift. So these are the only things that will cause a demand curve to move to the right or move to the left. 
and tires is just an acronym to help you remember these categories. So T stands for tastes and preferences of consumers. As people's tastes change in favor of a good or an effective advertising campaign has been waged, demand increases or shifts to the right. As people's tastes change against a good or a good loses popularity, demand decreases or shifts to the left. For example, when Michael Jordan began endorsing the products, demand for Nike and Gatorade products increased or shifted to the right. So oftentimes companies will get celebrities to endorse their products to try to increase demand. The I stands for income. Income of consumers. As income increases, consumer demand for a good or service will increase or shift to the right. And as income decreases, consumer demand for goods and services will, will shift to the left. So as long as we're talking about normal goods, this is true, okay? Normal goods are goods for which demand increases when income increases and falls when income decreases um, and the price of the good remains constant. So what this is basically saying is when people have more money, then a higher quantity is demanded at every given price, they'll buy more stuff. And when people have less money, then a lower quantity is demanded at every given price, and so they'll buy less stuff. Um, now, there are some exceptions to the rule. If we are talking about inferior goods, inferior goods are goods for which demand increases when income decreases and falls when income increases. So inferior goods are things like, here's some examples, generics, okay? For example, Let's say I get a raise at my job. Next time I go grocery shopping, I'll probably buy more um, Jolly Green Giant green beans, so my demand for the normal good will increase, and I'll buy less Flavorite or you know Aldi brand green beans, so my demand for the generic will decrease. Um, or used clothing would be another example of an inferior good. Um, when I get a raise at my job, I'm going to buy more brand name clothes, new from the store, and my demand for used goods from Goodwill and Salvation Army and Savers will decrease. So normal goods are what we're going to be talking about 99% of the time, but sometimes um, if you're told that a good is inferior, that's, you know, that's what that means. So for example, when you graduate from college and begin earning an income, demand for ramen noodles decreases and demand for steak dinners increases since ramen noodles an inferior good and steak is a normal good. All right, the R in tire stands for related goods. We have two types of related goods. Substitutes, which are things that can easily be used in place of one another. Everybody knows what a substitute is. Um, so we'll talk about substitutes first. If two things are substitutes, then when the price of one increases, demand for the other will increase. Or if the price of one decreases, demand for the other will decrease. Um, instead of thinking in terms of good A and good B, that gets very confusing. So let's just take a look at an example here. If Starbucks changes, or I'm sorry, if Caribou changes their prices, let's say Caribou decides to make all their menu items twice as expensive. So Caribou raises its prices. Demand for Starbucks will increase because now in relationship to Caribou, Starbucks seems cheaper for people. So the quantity demanded at every given price at at Starbucks will increase and the, the demand curve for Starbucks coffee will actually shift to the right. Um, there was no shift in the demand curve for the Caribou coffee because at Caribou it was just a change in price or a movement along the current demand curve. So the quantity demanded for Caribou coffee will decrease but the demand curve for Starbucks coffee will shift to the right and more people will purchase Starbucks coffee at every given price. The other type of related goods is substitute goods and, I'm sorry, complementary goods. We already talked about substitutes. Complementary goods are things that are used with each other or always used together. If two goods are complements, then if the price of one increases, demand for the other will actually decrease and vice versa. For example, demand for ketchup is going to fluctuate if hamburger prices fluctuate because these things are used together. So let's say the price of hamburger increases. Let's see, mad cow disease sweeps the nation and um, we have a shortage of beef, so the beef prices go up. So hamburgers are more expensive, therefore the demand for ketchup will decrease because less people are buying hamburgers, less people will need to purchase ketchup to go along with their hamburgers. 
All right, so in this example, there was a price change in hamburgers, so a movement along the demand curve for hamburgers, but there is a shift in demand for ketchup, so the demand curve for ketchup will actually shift to the left. The E entire stands for expectations of future price changes. If consumers expect the price of a good to rise in the future, then immediate demand will increase because people want to get the, the good now while it's still cheap before the price goes up. Or if consumers expect the price of a good to decrease in the future, then immediate demand will decrease because people want to wait and buy it later when the price falls. For example, um, let's say you're driving home from school on Thursday and you look at your gas gauge and, and you kind of need gas, but you don't really want to stop right now. Um, what are you going to think about? Well, on Fridays, the price of gas almost always increases. So since it's Thursday and you know that the price will go up tomorrow, you're probably going to decide to buy gas now while the price is still cheap. So if you expect the price to rise, then your current demand will increase. The last letter from our acronym here is S, size of population or market. And this just has to do with the number of people in a market for a good. So if the number of consumers in a given market increases, demand will increase. Or if the number of consumers in a given market decreases, demand will decrease for that good. For example, demand for Girl Scout patches increases when more girls join Girl Scouts. Um, so a higher number of patches will be demanded at every given price and that curve would actually shift to the right. All right, so in conclusion, price does not cause a shift of the curve. Okay, if there's a change in price of a product that we're analyzing, there will be a movement along the demand curve for that item. However, if there is a change in consumer income, the price of related goods, taste and preferences, expectations of future prices, or the number of buyers in a market, then there will be a shift in the curve. All right, and this is just a little slide to show you again or remind you the difference in what this looks like. A change in price is a movement along the curve, up or down the curve, leading to a change in quantity demanded. And a change in one of the things from tires that we just talked about, a demand shifter, will actually cause the curve to move to the right or move to the left. Um, meaning a higher or lower quantity of the good is demanded at every given price. All right, and I think, uh, yep, we that wraps us up. We're done.